So today we look at a forgotten hero, Suhal Dev, who had slain the Ghaznavid conqueror's grandson, Salamasud. While the latter continues to be venerated by many people as a Ghazi, very few have heard of the name Suhal Dev. In the middle of the 11th century, Muhammad Ghaznavi had left India after his raids. Within a short span of time, many of the local tribes had regained power. Salamasud was sent east of Indus as a tax collector and as a missionary to convert the so-called heathens. At the same time in central and west India, several influential people rose to prominence. First amongst them was Raja Boja, who had been monitoring the situation from the Deccan. Raja Bhimdeva of Gujarat, though weakened from the debacle at Somnath, had now gathered a considerable army of levies. The city of Kalenja, the only city to have withstood a Ghaznavid siege, had now got a chance to fight back. The Turkic invasions had devastated the north, especially from Punjab to what is now Uttar Pradesh. Many people from Rajput royalty were relinquished from power, as their dynasties fell or were usurped by pretenders. In this void rose a local lord known as Suhaldev or Saraswati, an ancient city from the time of Ashoka. Masood was dispatched to India at a point of great turmoil in the Ghaznavid Empire. The Gurid faction was rising, the Salayuk Turks were overrunning Khorasan, and at the Battle of Dan- Danakan, the Ghaznavids were crushed and lost most of their holdings in Central Asia. First, let us see the background of Masood. What we know about him comes from Tawarik i Mahmudi. Historic romance written after his death and a biography Mirad i Masudi a 17th century Persian language text. I am not going into further details as you can find it in Wikipedia and we are going in to concentrate on the battle between Masood and Suhaldev and what led up to it. Masood had journeyed with his grandfather in the Somnath campaign. During the reign of Muhammad the second of Ghazni, the son of Mahmud, he helped to fortify the capital. As time progressed, more and more Indian cities refused to pay their taxes, chiefly Kannauj and Meerut, which had been conquered by the Ghaznavids. Masood was to march on these cities and ov- overwhelm the Rajas by force. He was sent with a much smaller force to Peshawar, which was now the base of operations in Hindustan. Here he recruited conscripts from local zamindars. Finally, after a few months, he was able to assemble a large army, which looked much like a Hindu army than a Muslim. His army was filled with Hindus who had no qualms with his religion. At this point of history, there were only a few Muslims of Indian descent, most of whom converted to get out of the barriers of caste or to just save their skin. The reason why Kannauj and Merut stopped paying taxes was unknown to them. Behind the scenes, the Rajas were working diligently towards an arrangement. Though there was no concept of Hindu or Indian nationality at that time, there was a common agreement to keep the Turks and Persians out. 
Raja Boja, who was recovering from a brain surgery at the time, was able to settle the differences between many of the Rajput factions. 